Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at an introduction to the normal distribution so we can answer questions from exercise 3a. So in maths we have lots of different probability distributions based on the different characteristics that the data can have. For example in the first year we saw the binomial distribution whereby if we have a set number of trials and we're looking for a number of either success or failures out of those trials, we can use the binomial distribution to calculate those probabilities. So for example, if we want to calculate the probability of uh, successfully flipping heads on four coins out of eight, then we could use a graph or use our calculator to work out that probability. And we could also work out the probability of having three or fewer heads being flipped on a coin. We could also use the graph or the calculator to work that out as well. This was the CD function, the cumulative distribution function, whereas the PD function was the just for the um, number of the, the probability of four successes. With the normal distribution, the data is going to be slightly different. It's no longer success, failures, and number of trials. It's just a range of data that is evenly spread out with, um, with perfect symmetry. And the data that we're going to be using for the normal distribution is, for example, height or weight or time, continuous data, whereby the majority of the values are going to be close to the average for that set of data. Uh, as we move further away from the average height, there are fewer people and there would be a lower probability of randomly selecting a person at that height. So we're going to have most of the people clustered in the centre and then very few people on the extremes. Just like this kind of histogram represents here, most people are centred around 150 to 165 centimetres tall. Very few people on the extremes below 130 and above 180. And this is a typical normal distribution shape perfectly symmetric on the left and the right hand side, most of the data centred around the centre, very few bits of data on the extreme edges. What we're going to do here is we're effectively going to divide up all of these bars infinitely small and then kind of connect all of those points together, all the peaks of those bars together, just like this to form a frequency density graph. Now what it turns into, eventually, is a graph that looks perfectly like this. We're going to have a mean height of 175, so the height is going to be perfectly centred at 175, evenly distributed on the left and the right hand side. And the standard deviation, well how does that affect the shape of the graph? Well if the standard deviation was lower than 12, the graph would be skinnier than the graph that it currently is. If the graph had a, or if the standard deviation was higher than 12 centimeters, it would be wider than this graph here and probably lower at its peak point. So the standard deviation affects how wide the normal distribution graph is. And the way that we work out the probabilities with the normal distribution, the key fact of normal distribution is that it's the area under the curve that we use to represent probabilities with the total area underneath the graph equal to 1. So that means then if the graph is perfectly um, symmetric then the probability that someone is under 175 centimeters tall is 0.5 and the probability that someone is over 175 centimeters tall is 0.5 because the area under the graphs here must add up to 1 and it's split perfectly in half so 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 so the key variables that we need for a normal distribution graph are the mean and the standard deviation yes if we knew the variance that would help because we could just square root it to know the standard deviation but it's the standard deviation that's key for most of our questions Key features of the normal distribution are, because it's perfectly symmetric, the mean is also the median, which is also the mode. It's, uh, it has asymptotes at each end. It never actually reaches the x-axis, but it gets infinitely close so that the probability is very, very low on each tail. And it has points of inflection. I think this is just a little bit extra than something you need to know. It has points of inflection at 
mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma, that's the mean minus the standard deviation and the mean plus the standard deviation, that is kind of the point at which it goes from a decreasing gradient now to a, uh, where the gradient is decreasing to where the gradient is now increasing on the left and from where the gradient is decreasing on the right to where the gradient is increasing uh, on the right. Um, it's split up into defined sections. 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the data is in between two standard deviations of the mean. And 97% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. Remember that one standard deviation is the average spread for the data. So to be two standard deviations away from the mean, double the average is quite far away from the centre, really. So 95% of data is within two standard deviations. Going back to this 68% above, 68% of the data is in between one standard deviation from the centre. Uh, that's, the mid, that's the average spread of the data. Um, what we could do is now work out these tails here by using the rule that the area is equal to 1 and then divide it up into two halves, one for the top end, one for the bottom end, so we'd get 0.16 on each tail there. We could effectively say then that 16% of males would have a height less than 163 centimetres. What I've done there is we did um, the mean, which was 175, take away 12, which was one standard deviation, to get you to 163. <coughs> Let's have a go at a question that we would be expected to be able to answer in the normal distribution chapter. The diameter of a rivet produced by a particular machine x millimetres is produced is modelled as x is normally distributed 8 millimetres with a standard deviation of 0 0.2. Find the probability that the um, machine produces a riv rivet more than eight millimeters big. Second question and third question coming up as well. So first thing I would do is I would draw out my normal distribution and I'd label the key features. Eight millimeters would be at the center and then I'd write on the side here that the standard deviation is 0 0.2. And this kind of tells me the answer already. The probability that if a rivet is produced that it's greater than eight millimeters big will be the area that's under the graph here. And given that that is half the graph, the area below is 0 0.5. To answer the next question, find the probability that um, the rivet that is produced at random is in between 7.6 millimetres and 8.4 millimetres. Well, what we've got to use here is that 8 to 7.6 is two standard deviations away from the mean. And 8.4 is also two standard deviations from the mean. And if you remember back to those key facts, it's 95% of the data that is within two standard deviations of the mean. So the answer here is 0.95. Okay. Part C is now find the probability that x is more than 7.8 uh, millimetres um, in size. So that is from the point 7.8 there. We want it to be bigger than 7.8. So it's this area here plus the extra area that's on the right hand side. Let's deal with this bit first. This bit first is one standard deviation away from the mean. That represents 68% of the data if you're one standard deviation away from the mean. But we only want the left-hand side of it, so this is going to be 34% of our data. So 34% of the data will be here. The right-hand side in total will be 0 0.5, so add the two together and you get 0 0.84 as your answer for this question. So using the key features that one standard deviation away is 68% of the data, two standard deviations away is 95% of the data, and three standard deviations away is 99.5% of the data. So using that knowledge, have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out.
Okay, so a bit of a tricky question this one. What we've got to use is these two are these two pieces of information. 84% of the pigs weigh more than 52 kilograms and 97.5 of the pigs weigh more than 47.5 kilograms to work out the mean and the standard deviation. So let's draw two graphs, one for each of those pieces of information. So I like to draw my y-axis in the center of the graph. That's where the mean is going to be positioned and the standard deviation is going to be on the outside. <clears throat> so what we know here is that 84% of the data weigh more than 52 kilograms. So 52 will go here and this area <clears throat> will be represented by uh, 0.16. Now what I remember is that if I were to draw another line there, equal, equally uh, symmetric onto the other side there, that that would be the middle 68% of data, which would leave 0.32 on each side. So I know that 52 is one standard deviation away, is one standard deviation away from the mean. So what that tells me is that mu minus sigma is equal to 52, because that's on the lower side. For the next one, 97.5 of pigs weigh more than 47.5 kilograms. So 47.5. Now I know that 95% of data is in between two standard deviations of the mean. And that would be effectively what we've got here if we also color in the right hand side two standard deviations away from the mean, that would be 95% of the data. But also if we add on this extra tail bit here, that will increase it to 97.5. So I now know that 47.5 is two standard deviations away from the mean, or in other words, sigma minus two, sorry, mu minus two sigma is equal to 47.5. And now I've got two simultaneous equations that I need to solve. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to do one equation, take away the other. I'll call this equation one and I'll call this equation two. And I'm going to, I'm going to do equation one, take away equation two. What that will leave me with is 4.5 for the number is equal to one standard deviation. And therefore I can then work out the mean by adding the standard deviation onto the other side and it now becomes 56.5. So there we are. That is the standard deviation and the mean calculated using those key um, benchmarkers of one standard deviation from the mean is 68%, two standard deviations away from the mean is 95%, and three standard deviations away from the mean is 99.5% likely to happen. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 3a. This is only really the introduction of it, so do move on to the next videos as soon as you've got the hang of this, but don't move on before you've had a go at these questions. Thanks very much for watching.